Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to use an RM4 relay. This is made by BRK for smoke detectors. And you can tie in your electrician smoke detectors with your security system. This will work with a Honeywell, DSC, basically any kind of security system you have. I install mostly Honeywell, so I'm going to show you how to do it on a Honeywell system with a wireless sensor. Now during new construction you can drop in a wire to this. You can drop a two wire in there, four wire, depending on what you want or what you're pulling. And you can wire this directly to the panel. In this case, I'm going to use a 5816 uh, sensor wirelessly to tie into this. I'm going to put a longer delay on it. What you have to remember, first of all, you need to make sure it's code with wherever you're working, um, whichever state you're in. Uh, this state it is code. I've checked with inspectors. I've done this several times in other houses. The next thing you need to remember is if you're using a monitoring company, um, don't do this yourself, or if you do this yourself, you may void any type of warranty or any type of uh, contract you have with that company. So if you're paying somebody for service, check with them before you do this. The next thing to remember is this, unlike a wireless smoke detector, covers every smoke detector in the house that's wired by the electrician. In the state of South Carolina, they're all wired in series. So if any of the smoke detectors go off in the house, this relay will trip and set your arm off also. What it doesn't know the difference between is a dead battery and a smoke detector going off. So you can set a relay or delay in your system. Uh, it's not always long enough depending on the type of smoke detectors you have. If you have the smoke detectors that just chirp when the batteries die, nine times out of ten it will not set your arm off. If you have the newer ones that will tell you low battery or if they say fire, fire, carbon monoxide, whatever it is, it doesn't have enough delay in the system to not trip your sensor. So make sure if you're going to put this in, you change the batteries in your smoke detector every six months to every year. Again, if you don't know what you're doing, um, you can follow the instructions. You can probably get through it. If you mess something up, uh, you're going to be calling an uh, alarm company to come out and fix your panel. So do not attempt this if you don't know what you're doing. Again, I recommend calling a professional to do this. Uh, if you are a professional, uh, hopefully this helps you out. So if you've never seen this before, this is an RM4 relay from BRK. It has a traveler wire, hot, and a neutral. So inside your smoke detector you'll see the same three colors, orange, white, and black. On the other side it has a normally open, normally closed, and a ground wire. So depending on the type of system you're working with, um, I'm using a Honeywell um, 5 to 20 panel. The circuits are normally closed. So basically we're going to take this blue wire and I'm just going to trim it back. I'm not going to cut it all the way off in case I ever want to use it for something else or you know, want to add something down the line later. So we don't want a normally open circuit. We want it normally closed. Basically what that means when the smoke detector goes off, it opens the circuit up, sets the alarm off. Since we're using a wireless sensor, if you don't have a wireless receiver, which in this case I'm using a 6150 RF keypad for my receiver, uh, you can use a 5881. It just depends on your system. Again, if you don't have a wireless receiver of some sort, this isn't going to help you any at all. Okay, so I've got everything stripped, um, ready to go for you uh, to show you what's going to happen here. Make sure if you're using a uh, Honeywell, you're going to use the loop output on it. If you're using a DSC or GE or different brand, make sure it has a loop output on it also. Normally these contacts, when you program them, you just put the magnet up against the side, you open the circuit. That's how you program it. We're actually going to open and close this one using the screws at the top or the loop out on the top. The next thing you want to do is try to find the end of the loop for all your smoke detectors. So try to get the one that's the furthest away from the electrical panel. When they wire these smoke detectors together, basically you'll have two wires or two sets of wires coming in. And these loop from smoke detector to smoke detector to smoke detector until you get to the end. The last one will only have one set of wires hanging down. That'll give you more room in your electrical box to put this up in it. So with that being said, it's going to be easier for me to show you how to wire this on the table versus up in a ceiling. So if you take down your old smoke detector, your electrician smoke detector, unscrew it quarter turn, pull it off. I always take this off because it's easier for me to put this on later because all your wiring is going to be doing up inside the box. So if you loosen the screws up a little bit, this turns a little bit and should come off the ceiling. For some reason it's painted to the ceiling. You can do this if your wire comes down far enough. Uh, to me it's just easier to get this out of my way. The first thing I want to do is actually program my sensor. What I'm going to end up with once I get the sensor programmed is this up on the ceiling and I normally just put this right beside of it. So you can put this in a guest bedroom or wherever it's at. 
it doesn't look any worse than just the smoke detector hanging down. Um, again, some people are a little bit more OCD. They don't like seeing stuff up there. But if you've already seen a smoke detector up there, this little guy right here, it's not going to make a world of difference. So I'm going to run my wire out of the back of it, loop it underneath the, the lip of the smoke detector here, and then just mount it right beside of it. Normally, the sticky pad that comes with the uh, sensor will hold it up there. If you've got a, uh, a textured ceiling, uh, you'll probably have to run a sheetrock screw to hold it in place. Some of you can probably skip this step if you've done this. Again, if you're an installer, you should know how to do this. Um, I'm going to feed these wires just up through here just to get them out of the way because I want them to come out of the back of my sensor. I'm going to connect these to my 5816. down like so I'm gonna put my slack out of here or just fold it over in whichever works for you if you're using the screw hole make sure you don't pinch it or cut it with the screw when you tighten your screw up after I get that done my wires are not touching right now they're just apart wouldn't matter if they were touching because it's not programmed yet I'll pop my battery in and put my cover on. Battery's in, cover's on. Make sure you don't pull the cover back off when you're in programming because if you trip the tamper, the tamper's gonna send the signal, it's gonna program it differently than what we wanna program on the loop out. So lid's on, ready to go. When we're doing our program, we wanna do our installer code. Okay, we're in our programming mode, star 56 is your programming. I'm going to hit no for confirm, so zero. You can confirm if you want to. I just prefer to hit no confirm. This to 20, your wireless zone start at 17, so I'm going to start with 17. This panel doesn't have anything else connected to it right now. Uh, the zone type is open, so we're going to make this a zone type 9. So you can do fire, which is what you should do because it's 24 hours a day. So this opens at any time, any shape, any place, any way, sets off the alarm. So that's what you want to set at normally. Um, I sometimes, depending on the customer, and again, depending on your fire codes and everything else, depending on the contract you have with your customer, you can set this to a delay, but if you set it to delay, it only delays while the system's armed. Now, this will prevent false alarms, but it also, if your house catches on fire while the system's not armed, it doesn't go anywhere. So, type 9 fire or 24-7 is the way you want to program it. So, I'm going to skip the partition because I'm on partition 1, report codes 1. It's an RF transmitter, which is right. Now this is where the serial number, normally if you program these, again, the installers already probably know this. Um, if you're new to installing, um, you may or may not know this, but normally you put your magnet up against the sensor, move it away, and it sends a signal. In this case, I'm actually gonna use the leap. I say leap, the loop. So I'm gonna close the circuit and open it. I'm gonna do it again to confirm it, even though it's not confirmation. Confirmation will be the third time. So right now I'm set to loop one. Normally that would be loop two because normally it's using the side sensor. So I'm gonna confirm loop one open and closed. I'm gonna skip on through, program the alpha. If you want to, you could program as fire. In this case, I'm not gonna do that. Now if you have monitoring service with this, when you exit out of your programming, as soon as you open those wires apart, it's gonna set the alarm off because there's a fire. So you can do one of two things. If you have the, um, if you have monitoring on your uh, system, make sure you call the monitoring company, tell them you're testing the alarm or adding something to it, so they'll put it on temporary hold. If not, as soon as you exit out of programming, get ready to hit the button on your panel because it's going to go into a fire mode. So basically, we're just going to stop the fire mode temporarily until we can actually go install the sensor. Now, the other way to do this, if you can remember, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my programming. I'm going to go back to zone 17. And I'm actually going to make it just a regular entry exit for now. Because I've already got my loop programmed. And what that will do is that will let me bypass or let, let me work on it without actually setting the alarm off. Once I'm done with it, I'll go back into programming. I'll put it back as a zone 9. And then I'll test the alarm. So I'm going to exit out of programming. It's just going to show an open circuit. Once it registers it, again, wireless sensors on Honeywell. They take... Um, up to four minutes to actually report back to the panel. Um, if you just touch it together and undo it, it'll actually come up and show you that it's open and closing. 
So you can either wait until it actually reports back or you can touch the wire together to send a signal to it. So I know my zone's opening and closing now. So again, if you found the end of your line with all your smoke detectors, again, this is up in the ceiling. We've taken down the old smoke detector, so I can pick it up. So you've either just got the plate up there. Again, I try to take the plate down, but you don't have to take the plate down if you don't want to. Pull your electrical wires through. So basically it's gonna look sort of like this. So it's either gonna have one set of wires or two sets of wires coming down. Turn off your circuit breaker, double check it with a voltmeter if you need to. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna tie the oranges to the oranges. Again, depending on your electrical code, your electrician, the red is usually the traveler line. So the oranges go to the red, the blacks go to the black, the white goes to the white. There's no copper on this particular sensor, so you don't have to worry about the copper. The copper ground should be tied together inside of the box and just looped from smoke detector to smoke detector. So once I get all these looped together, what I want to do is I want to come over to my circuit. And again, we're going to wire up these, put them back up in the ceiling. Since I'm doing this on a table just for demonstration, imagine there's wire nuts on here. Now on my normally closed circuit, again, the blue is normally open. I'm going to take these two sensors, I'm going to tie them in to this relay module. I'm going to do this. If you can see that from there, it's a bad angle. I don't have anything to prop that up on right now. As soon as I do that, I get a ready signal from it. So my wireless sensor is ready now. And what happens when the smoke detectors go off, it sends a signal down this orange line. Now this orange line is tied from every smoke detector to every smoke detector in the house, or should be by code, at least in the state of South Carolina. So when this gets hot wire sent down it, it opens up the circuit in here. So it's basically like just taking this wire off. And as soon as this wire goes off, it sets off the alarm. So it would be like a doorbell then basically, or like a, a, a regular switch. So it does that, it sets off the alarm, the alarm goes off, and then you push your buttons to set, turn it back off. Now again, when you mount this on the ceiling, let's imagine this is our ceiling, we're working upside down. I screw that to the ceiling. This is just gonna fit right back to where it was. Smoke detector sits in place, and of course you plug your wire back in the back of your smoke detector. So this is fitting in the box behind all this stuff right here. So now that my imaginary smoke detector is in place and wired like it's supposed to be, I'm gonna go back into programming. I'm gonna go back to that zone 17. Oops, 71, that might work if I do 17. I'm gonna go into here. I'm gonna make it the nine now. Once I do that, that's basically gonna open up the circuit at any point. So if the battery chirps on the smoke detector, whether the smoke detector goes off, whatever happens, that's going to open that relay, set your alarm off. So our transmitter, I'm just going to skip through that. That's already programmed. I'm not going to confirm it because I already know it's in there. And I'm ready to program the alpha and then onto the next zone if I want to. Again, zero zero to get out of here. Star 99 to exit out of programming. And we're good to go. Now one last thing you can do with these, if you're doing a smoke detector of any type. There are two different ways to program those. Get back into here. 17. So you've got fire normally, which basically as soon as the smoke detector goes off, it sets off the alarm. Um, company's notified. There's also a zone number 16, which is fire with verify. Now the fire with verify basically means the smoke detector has to go off two times in a short period of time. Now, there's good and bad about that. One, if it's a low battery, it chirps. It only chirps every so often. So the odds of it chirping and setting off your alarm, giving you a false alarm is not very likely. The bad part is, is if the house is on fire, the smoke detector goes off and for some reason that circuit gets burnt. It only goes off the one time. It doesn't go off again. It's not going to uh, ever set your alarm off. So use fire with verify only if you have to, or only if your customer's aware that this is a, you know, this is what this has done. Now let's say, for instance, your homeowner only wants this to go off if the alarm is set. Um, you can actually go in and you can actually do a 24-7 monitoring on it. If I can hit the right button here. So 24-7 would be that it monitors at 24-7. Or you could go in and create a delay on it, just like you normally would an entry-exit delay. 
Um, you can set this up on delay two. So if you create a second delay in there, and you can make the second delay maybe 15 seconds. Uh, that would give the homeowner time to go up over and shut off the alarm before it went off. But again, this is only going to work if the alarm is set. If the alarm is not set, smoke detectors go off, does not trip the alarm, will not call the fire department, will not help them out any. So again, only use these codes if the customer is aware of it and they know what they're doing. Again, number nine, ideal position to set that. Get out of programming and you are all set. Hopefully that helps some people out. Uh, make sure you click like and subscribe. I'll be adding more content. I'm gonna start working on a programming series um, for installers. Uh, I'm by far not the expert installer. I don't work for Honeywell. I've just been doing this for several years. There's gonna be things on here that I won't get into. I'm gonna do basic programming first. I might get into some advanced programming eventually. Um, so keep an eye on the channel. Again, click like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.